Now, for many years, a hand picking has from the farm or bush has been the only way to get snails to the market and dinner table. However, the rise in demand has called for the need to increase supply, which has opened up the sector with a lot of potential in the snail farming. Nigeria will need an additional 25,000 tons or a 100% increase to meet the rise in demand for snails, even as the United States of America imports more than $4 million worth of snails annually from all over the world, including Nigeria. Now, let's explore this segment of the agri sector further. I have show by your Mojukwe Johnson, CEO of November's Farm, uh, right here with me in the studio. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank I hope you. I pronounced the name well, yeah. November's. November. Mm. All right. So mm -hmm. looking at uh, the market for snail farming in Nigeria, Nigeria alone is targeting about 25,000 of snail production annually, not only for domestic markets, but for also uh, international trade. What's the level of interest in snail farming at the moment? Uh, well, thank you for having me. Uh, well, prior to this time, the advocacy for snail farming has been on a low but in the recent time, it has been on the rise, and that's because people tend to look into it as a way of uh, any income, not just locally, but even internationally. So the advocacy has been on the rise now, and that's why we have a lot of people now flocking in, trying to make some ends meet from a snail farming. So what's the market like? What, what's the demand like? Yeah, it is. It, just locally here, we all know snail farming to be food for the elite. So even that, and they will have more of uh, the, the value of airlines in the country, it's even far, far, far more than that of those uh, low-income earners. So even that alone is enough market not to now talk of the, uh, an opportunity for the uh, exportation. Somebody like me now, every month I export to the U.S., I export to the U.K., I export mm. to Germany every month. And then uh, not, not just me, this just single me here. So we have other people that does that too. So the, the, it, it, it has so much potential and then it's actually bringing in income. So I'd like to hear about your experience. How did you go into snail farming and what has the journey mm. been like? Oh, wow. Well, my seems to be a special experience because I've been into snail farming as far back as 1999. Mm. Though then it was a hobby, you know, I, I've not gotten an admission. You were just handpicking. Yes, hand. yes, behind our house then. So as at that time, I've not gotten admission into a hand institution. So, and then I had this interest and I still have it. You know, so passionate when it comes to agriculture, especially livestock. So back then, uh, I've been handpicking from the bush. I never knew what they were called. I never knew Achantina marginata. I never knew the botanic animal or whatever. So I just knew that I was picking snails. I was raising them. They were growing. They were reproducing. So the, the knowledge had been there. The passion had been there. So I started it commercially now, uh, year 2013, while I was in Port Harcourt. But you were making money from it back then? Back then, no, it was a hobby. Okay. It was a hobby, but not until 2013 when I was in Port Harcourt. So I started this commercially, though it was still very, very low. But commercially now, I cannot tell you that I started just last year during the COVID. COVID really opened up, uh, you know, uh, my eye to it. And then uh, ever since, uh, I've made millions from snares. Mm, I like I the sound of that. I now have. let's talk about some of the challenges because I know every business has its challenge. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the challenges. Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, the challenges in snail farming are very minimal and then they are peculiar and that's to do with uh, the farmer or the investor himself or herself. Uh, snail farming, when compared to other form of agriculture, especially livestock, is the most safe or, that you, or the safest that you can think of. The, uh, when you are talking of the challenges, it has to be, number one, the first challenge that you have there is heat. Mm. So once the humidity is not there and then you're having a lot of it, so it can be of a harm to the snails, then uh, I think that does it. Oh, what, what about diseases? What about predators? It is very, very minimal. It is very, very minimal. That, cause I can't even think of any challenge. Because you say, I'm trying to rack up my brain, but I couldn't think of any. Now, of course, they, they have predators that prey on them, and one of them is all these rodents. So if you can weed off rodents, once you are making their housing, if you can make sure that the housing is escape-proof, that is, uh, no intruder can come in, and then they cannot go out. So that's is safe. And then uh, another thing you can think of is uh, uh, maybe birds or or uh, uh, 
a snake, but it has to be with the escape proof. So once the, the investor or the farmer has taken care of that, it is very minimal. Snake, do, they don't get sick, unlike uh, other animals. They don't easily get sick. They don't. So because once the, the hygiene is right, it is one of the safest... Uh, and how prolific are they? Ah, they are extremely prolific because uh, snakes are hermaphrodite. That's one of the characteristics. Uh, they possess both male and female organ. So when two snakes come together, when they mate, so they go their separate ways and two of them still lay egg. So on the average, they should be expecting minim wow. minimum of five eggs from each. <laughs> and then they give you about three to four clutches in a year. So if a single snail is giving you about a minimum of, let's say, 25, 30 eggs in a year, so that tells you how prolific they are. So how can we encourage more participation, more people to go into snail farming, and also generate more revenue for the country? Uh, well, number one, it starts to start with passion. Because whatever you are doing, you must have that passion for it. So once uh, a prospective uh, investor, a prospective snail farmer has that interest, that's where to start from. And then uh, I do encourage people that uh, in snail farming, you don't need to have a, a large expanse of land or a high budget before you can go into it. With your 50000 you can venture into snail farming. So it's not capital intensive? It's not. It's not. It does depend on your own budget. It's not. Mm. So... What are all the things that we can do to encourage participation? You touched on the fact that uh, it's not capital intensive, but there are other things that a lot of people can be interested in. For instance, maybe getting uh, loan support and all that from the government. Uh, well, it still has to do with the individual or the, with the financial institution. But one thing that I know that with uh, your low budget, Okay, for instance, I have some clients that start uh, uh, as low as, they started the snail farm with as low as 30,000. The first thing that you, can, you should first think of is the, 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 the snary, that is the housing. So once you can cater for that, uh, with 20,000, you can buy some stock. With as low as 20,000 naira, you can just, for instance, a point of lay is about 350, 400 naira. Mm. So just divide that your budget with that, then that gives you the number of snakes that you can have. But for the fact that uh, they don't easily get sick nor uh, mortality is enough encouragement too. And then we are thinking of the feeding. Uh, unlike uh, in poultry, unlike how easy is it to get their food? Yes, that's where I'm going now. Unlike in poultry, in fishery, cattle, and all that, but I'm into all that too. Uh, the the budget for their feeding is extremely minimal. For instance, they feed on leaves, they feed on uh, uh, on fruits. That's if they are going organic, just as I am. I'm into organic farming. So uh, sometimes I go to fruit market fruit markets, uh, I go there, I pack their waste, and what do I mean by waste? Uh, the, there are some food that are damaged, maybe they've been pressed, so they can't be sold to consumers, so they want to throw it away. So I go there, I pack them off them, so I've helped them, rather than giving money to, you know, for, uh, the waste. so I get them, I feed them to my snails, um, because they are still fresh, just that they are pressed for human consumption, so the feeding itself is minimal so that is, is a lot of encouragement so too. what would be your final word to someone who is looking forward to starting this business what would be your word of advice yeah I w that if i have been having that uh, advocacy now that uh, people should really go into snail farm because number one it gives a uh, lot of uh, uh, high uh, return on investment i can tell you that if you put in your XYZ Naira, you can get almost uh, times two of that if well taken care of. Then uh, for the fact that uh, uh, it is less stressful, so it's enough encouragement too. So I'm just encouraged because number one, uh, we have that comparative advantage in the country because uh, uh, snail, especially uh, Achachantina Marginata, is really domiciled here in this part of the world. Mm. We have the largest big, uh, largest snail in the All world. Right. <laughs> we mm. really are pressed oh. for time. We would have okay. loved you to continue. But thank you so much, Shoba and Modupe yeah. Johnson, yeah. CEO of the Farm. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you for joining us on Business Breakfast. Th